I still believe that you cannot understand contemporary capitalism without Marx. In many ways, it's irreplaceable. You know, we still live in the, in the system that uh, he has described so powerfully. And, you know, being able to anticipate the developments that are taking place today. That's why I say, yes, let's celebrate Marx and let's celebrate capital, but also realize that we need to see what, what is, not, is not taken into account. I think I began to read Marx when I was probably 18, 16, 17, you know, in school. I had a teacher, you know, I grew up in a communist town and my, my teacher, Italian teacher, of it, uh, he was a Marxist. But then I began to study more systematically when I went to the United States. And then really, really more seriously with the feminist movement. Feminism was a whole beginning of seriously engaging with Marx. Yeah, interesting enough. And I always say, we learned a lot from Marx. <laughs> Marx gave us the tool to criticize him. Because when we read the description of the reproduction of the workforce, he wrote for us. He literally wrote, but we had to change the subject. We had to bring in new subjects. It's only actually in, in Capital Volume 1 that Marx deals with the question of women's and labor. No? And uh, it's a, I think he wrote some of the most powerful pages on uh, the way the exploitation of women, the exploitation of women and children. I think that uh, in the whole Marxist socialist revolutionary tradition, you know, few have, uh, you know, have uh, with so much uh, um, pungency, um, you know, analyzed the way capitalism exploits labor and particularly the labor of women. Uh, at the same time, you know, one of the limits of Marx is that he concentrates on the position of women, either in the bourgeois family or in terms of their work experience, uh, he concentrate on their place in wage work, in wage industrial work. The criticism is that uh, he does not see, you know, the work of women in the process of reproduction as important in capitalist accumulation. That when it comes to an analysis of capitalist exploitation, right, he has a limited view of the ways in which capitalism exploits women, exploits women, women's labor. Uh, he does not see that the exploitation of women in capitalism, in the history of capitalism, even in the period of the Industrial Revolution, was not limited to wage industrial work, but actually, you know, uh, took place on a much broader arena, you know, extending and to the whole sphere of domestic activity. Those domestic activity that are crucial for the reproduction of the workforce. Marx very acutely, he recognizes the labor power, the potential that we have to work, this potential for exploitation, is not something that is naturally given. And particularly, you know, in uh, the work process is constantly consumed on a day-to-day -day basis. And so it has to be reproduced and recognizes that, but sees that process of the reproduction uh, of the workforce as being accomplished completely through commodity production. In other words, the worker gets the wage and out of the wage buys the commodities that are needed, the food, the houses, etc. And that's how they reproduce themselves. 
There is no other kind of work that comes in. For example, to prepare the food, right? For example, to make love, for example, to raise the children, etc. There's no sex. It's a totally asexual worker that Marx has in mind, you know? He speaks of procreation and he says, well, the capitalist class can let the workers take care of that. But no, actually the state intervenes very heavily with all kinds of prohibition, regulation, and this is the criticism that we have. This criticism of you know, Marx's omission of the sphere of reproduction extends to his analysis of primitive accumulation, you know, where the focus of the analysis is on the expulsion of the peasantry from the land, right? The enclosure, the fencing off of the commons, and so forth. And uh, again, I think that that analysis and the formation of a wage working class um, I think, again, that analysis was very limited because, uh, as I've tried to demonstrate in Caliban and the Witch, you know, clearly other forms, other types of enclosures were necessary. And so I've spoken about the body, the mechanization of the body, and all the practices that were introduced in the 16th, 17th century you know, to produce a body machines. Capitalism produced. The more important, the steam engine was the mechanization of the body. Yes, it was. And, and that, that study and uh, that attempt to turn all body powers into labor powers is something that has never ended. I think, the particularly starting in the 19th century, the question of disciplining the future generation of workers and uh, you know, preparing girls and boys to that kind of mechanization, lowering expectation, the work of lowering expectation, that's very fundamental, right? You know, you cannot do this, you cannot do that, because, look, when you're going to have a job, you cannot always do what you desire, etc. That preparation, it's really part of housework. Imagine if the capitalist class had to use you know, part of the wealth that they, they accumulate to build an infrastructure, a reproductive infrastructure, you know, uh, replacing all, all the many, 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 many tasks the women accomplish in their home. Their level of accumulation would have been drastically reduced. Capitalism needs to always have a population at the bottom, you know, because the work of reproducing labor, the work of reproducing labor power, it's a, a key determinant, a key determinant in the value of that labor power, a key determinant of the process of, of accumulation of value, of creation of surplus value. And that means always the need to create you know, a population, whether it is unpaid domestic workers, whether it is paid domestic workers coming you know, from the most impoverished parts of the world and therefore working in condition often of coercion, as we have today with immigrant women, often working in condition that are very, very coercive, or it is people in the plantation. We should not forget that much of the reproductive work uh, that went into the production of industrial proletariat and into this day is work that was done by slave labor. Say so racism and sexism are necessary condition of existence of the capitalist class. When you see the kind of mechanism of exploitation that I've articulated before, how the capitalist class always need a population without rights in the colonies, in the kitchen, in the plantation, you know, to, which in fact is determinant of, of the process of value accumulation. When you see that, you realize that racism, sexism uh, are, are conditions of existence, are not degenerations, but are actually intrinsic elements of the capitalist system of exploitation. 
And uh, in that way, you know, this, they represent one of our most terrain, important terrain of struggle. I am Silvia Federici. I am a teacher, feminist, feminist scholars and activist, as well as a writer. And this is what I've been for most of my life.